In this video, I wanna talk about how to use a DA polisher. Now let's get straight into it. What's going on? So glad you're here and welcome back to the Wilson Auto Detailing community. If you are a professional auto detailer who wants to become more successful and profitable in your business or just a car enthusiast who wants to improve your detailing ability, then definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button right below this video. So in front of me, I have a DA polisher, a dual action random orbital polisher called Griot's Garage 6 inch DA. Now this is a very entry level polisher. I have a review on it. If you want to check that out, hit the YouTube card that I'm linking up right now. This is just one of the several DAs that I own and this was actually the first one that I ever owned because it's such a great entry level polisher, such a great way for beginners to kind of get a feel for how to do paint correction. Now, the reason I wanna use this polisher is just because it's very simple to understand and it's a very good way to kind of explain the nature of dual action polishers, why we use them, and some tips and tricks that you can understand and utilize in your own auto detailing world. So just for some context, I have on this six inch backing plate, it's a pad from a company called Stay Fresh Car Care, it's just a finishing pad. And then the polish that I'm gonna be using is Mystic Cut from Wizard. It's actually a more heavy cutting compound, probably called a compound more than a polish for those of you who understand the difference. Now what I want to do is go over some very, very basic things about a DA because even though they're basic and very foundational, a lot of guys really still don't understand it entirely and it's why they're not getting a lot of good results or kind of promised results that they're looking for. So what I want to start off by doing is kind of explaining just very literally my strategy when I put a DA polisher to the paint, what it looks like. So when I'm using a DA polisher, Number one, when you are polishing, and I know the cord normally goes over your shoulder so that you're not gonna get it caught up in any of this up here, but I'm not turning it on right now, which is why the cord is down. So when I'm using a polisher, many beginners are really trying to put a ton of pressure down on the paint. The problem with that is that number one, the polisher itself is designed where you don't have to put a bunch of pressure down. So when you're putting a ton of pressure down, not only do you risk just heating up the polish too fast, but you also risk stalling it, and that's gonna affect the results you're getting and I'll explain that in just a second but when I'm using a polisher like a DA I'm literally just going to put the polishing pad on the paint and really what I'm trying to do is let the polisher and the weight of it itself do the work for me so I'm not lifting up or pushing down I'm just kind of letting the polisher have the control over the paint and I'm not pushing it down I'm not bringing it up just letting the weight of the polisher do the work now this is not a forced rotation dual action polisher and many of you guys who are beginning and really just many detailers in general have a lot of DAs that are not forced rotation and so because of that if I'm putting a bunch of pressure down on the paint I risk stalling the backing plate and I'm not gonna get the results I want so if you've ever noticed when you're using a dual action polisher there are times when the backing plate will continue to revolve but it won't continue to spin what I mean by that is you'll see it vibrating as you're using it but the backing plate itself is not spinning it's just still the problem with that is that you're not going to get the full measure of the polish, the full work of the polisher, and you're not gonna get the results you want because once again, the purpose of a DA is for the spinning and the revolving to happen at the exact same time, which is what makes dual action polishers so effective and separates them from a rotary polisher. And so if you take one of those elements out, the rotation or the spinning, you're not going to get the full measure of what you want. And that could be a big problem that many of you guys, many of you beginners are facing is that because you're putting pressure down, you'll see see the backing plate actually stop spinning. A good way to be able to tell if this is happening is take a Sharpie and just make a little line on a part of the backing plate and when the polisher stalls you'll see the line is no longer moving. It's just staying in one place and that'll give you a good idea if you're stalling the polisher. Now the second main reason that I see that a lot of guys are not getting the results they want and why I get a ton of comments, emails, messages about why my DA polisher is not giving me the results I want is because you're simply moving too fast. Now if you've ever used a rotary, you're probably used to moving a little bit quicker. However, when you go to a DA, or if you've never used a rotary and you're just starting with a DA, a lot of times guys tend to get really impatient. And so rather than moving at a slow pace and again, letting the polisher itself do the work, they're almost trying to do the work for the polisher. They're trying to make the polisher work and lean it up against different angles and push it down, go quicker. And again, when you're trying to kind of become the polisher itself, you're going to hurt the results you're getting. So as I'm moving the DA across the paint, I probably am not moving any faster than you see me moving right this second. So as quick as I'm moving in the frame right now, that's as quick as I move when the DA is actually on. But most guys are going like this right here. They're getting impatient. 
they're moving it too quickly, they're trying to get done, and the problem is a DA polisher by nature has to be worked in a little bit slower because of the nature of how it moves, what it does. It's not designed to be moved quickly like a rotary polisher is. Especially with an entry level DA like this, you're not going to burn any edges, you're not gonna hurt anything, and so even if you're moving across body lines, across contour lines, you're still going just as slow because again, this isn't gonna generate the friction that a rotary would where you're gonna burn an edge. So what I wanna do right now is go ahead and put some polish on this DA polisher and show you guys how quickly I'm going to move and what I'm going to be doing. Now this is not gonna be sped up at all. Once again, it's just gonna be live action so you guys can see exactly how I use this. Now, some of you guys may know that this is not the polisher that I, that I use most of the time and that is simply because it's not the best polisher in the world. Again, this is an entry level polisher. This is not one that I would suggest for guys who are very advanced and who have been doing a lot of paint correction. I prefer maybe my Rupe's Bigfoot when I'm doing stuff that's a little bit more serious, but I'm just gonna work this polish into right here where you guys can see in the frame. Go ahead and season my pad just a little bit and make sure that polish is kind of spread around. I'm gonna spread it around on the paint before I do anything, and then I'm going to go ahead and work it in. Not gonna speed any of it up, because again, I want you guys to be able to see exactly what this looks like and exactly how fast I'm going and not going. So I'm gonna keep it on a speed level of about three and a half, and we're gonna go ahead and work this in. So you guys saw how slow I was moving when I was using the DA, even just in this little section. And this is kind of part of the reason why something like paint correction or polishing costs more money is because not only does it take a certain level of skill, but it also takes a lot of time. So this is one of the areas of detailing where on the Wilson Auto Detailing channel we talk about how to simplify things, how to make things quicker, getting the same results. But as far as paint correction goes, there's really not any way of getting around, you know, just taking, honestly just taking your time and being super patient. And so the results that I'm getting, even with this entry level, DA, this Griot's Garage, are very, very good simply because I'm taking my time letting the polisher do the work. So you guys probably saw when it was on the paint, the backing plate never actually stopped spinning. The reason that was is because you guys even saw part of it, I could use just one hand without actually having to guide it with my other hand. Again, I'm just letting the pressure of the DA itself do the work for me, and so that causes me to never stall the backing plate, and so I'm getting the revolutions and I'm getting the spins at the same time, and therefore getting really awesome 
results. So what I want to show you guys here is just kind of the difference between stalling and actually the backing plate spinning. And so here I'm just going to turn it on real fast and show you guys what it looks like when it's spinning and it's actually working correctly because I'm not putting pressure. But when I put pressure down and I start leaning into the polisher, check out the backing plate. So you guys could see how much slower it was moving and then even would have stopped if I would have kept going. Again, it's called stalling because you're literally stalling the polisher and again, you're taking out one of those two, one of the two kind of core elements of what makes a DA actually work the way it does. And so again, that might be a huge reason why you're not getting the results you want. So here's the section right here that I polished. There's a bunch of little rock chips and stuff so you can ignore that, but just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of an idea of kind of what it looked like up close. But this is actually a really good example of kind of of why detailers overcomplicate things when it comes to paint correction and things like DAs you want to be you kind of have this ego of wanting to kind of be the best in the business in your area and the fact of it is the polishers themselves are becoming so advanced that they're kind of taking the user error out of it where it's kind of difficult to use a polisher the wrong way again just because they're getting so advanced and so if you can kind of remove yourself from the situation when you're doing paint correction and stop trying to you know angle it up angle it down put more pressure put less pressure because you know what you're doing and just let the polisher itself do the work, you're going to get results that are much, much better. And people just tend to overcomplicate things like this. But you guys saw while I was using it how simple it was, how I didn't overcomplicate it, wasn't trying to put a bunch of pressure, wasn't trying to move it in all these creative ways, just letting, again, what I paid for do the work. And again, I'm getting these awesome results, not having to worry about kind of spending a ton of time doing something and then it end up not actually looking the way I want it to look. So if you're new to the auto detailing industry, you might be wondering what kind of polisher to get, you know, entry level, more expensive, less expensive. I'm going to hook up some links below in the YouTube description box below this video to the link not only to this particular polisher, but also to two other polishers that I use on a very regular basis. And you can kind of research those and make your own decision if you're wanting to get into this area of detailing. But if you do, definitely use those Amazon links below because it does give this channel a small commission, but it helps this channel stay alive so I can keep giving out awesome content just like this all the time. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hook up all that stuff in the YouTube comments below because I always read those and I'm sure to get back to you guys as fast as I can. And if you are new to the Wilson Auto Detailing community, then definitely consider subscribing because I come out with videos all the time just like this on products, tools, strategies, communication skills, business skills, and so much more all in an effort to help the pro detailers become more successful and profitable in their businesses. And on this channel, I share the same strategies that turn my business into a full-time income with part-time hours. So if that interests you, definitely subscribe. Once again, thank you guys so much for being involved and watching. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard and I'll see you guys in the next video.